Okay, let's take a look at how to calculate those fractions in the oil and gas lease to a decimal and then to convert those decimal to a percentage. So some general rules that you'll remember from school is that in order to convert a fraction to a decimal, you have to divide the numerator by the denominator. So in this case, for 1 eighth, for example, the numerator is 1 and the denominator is 8. So it's going to be 8 goes into 1 to determine what that decimal is. Once we have that decimal, to convert it to a percent, all we have to do is move the decimal place over to the right two places. So I know it's real easy for us now to, once we you know, we're trying to calculate something to just reach for the calculator and plug in the number. But what I've found over the course of my career is that if I take the time to do it longhand, I'm going to have an easier time remembering that number, that decimal, than if I plug it into the, the calculator thousands of times. So let's start with just one eighth royalty. This is if the royalty in the oil and gas lease is one eighth. That means that the lessor is going to get one eighth and the lessee is going to get the seven eighths. So let's see what the lessor's interest is, the landowner's interest is, with the one eighth. So we're going to take the denominator, we're going to take the numerator, and we're going to divide it by the denominator, which is eight. So how many times does 8 go into 1? Well, it doesn't, so we're going to put our decimal up here. So we're going to add a 0 here, and that 8 goes into 10, then 1 times. 1 times 8 is 8, 10 minus 8 is 2. How many times does 8 go into 2? It doesn't, so we're going to add a 0. How many times does 8 go into 20? 8 times 2 is 16, so we're going to add a 2 up here. 2 times 8 is 16, now that's 20 minus 16 is 4. 8 cannot go into 4, we're going to add another 0, then 8 goes into 40 five times. So your percent, 1 eighth, converts to a decimal of 0.125. And how do we determine what the percent is going to be? We're going to move that decimal over two places. So that's going to be 0.125 is going to become 1 to 12.5%. So that's what the lessor is going to get out of the deal. So let's see what the lessee is going to get out of the remaining net revenue interest. They're going to get a 7 eighths. So let's again divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay. And 8 goes into 7. Well, we know 8 can't go into 7, so we're going to add a decimal place. And then we're going to plug in a 0. So how many times does 8 go into 70? Well, we know that 8 times 8 is 64. So 70 minus 64, and that's going to leave 6. How many times does 8 go into 6? Well, it can't, so we're going to add a 0. 8 goes into 60 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. 60 minus 56 is 4. 8 goes into 4, it can't, so we're going to add another 0, and that is 5 times 8 is 40. So the lessor's, or I'm sorry, the lessee's interest, the oil and gas company's interest, is a 0.875 decimal. 7 eighths becomes 0.875, and then the percent is going to remove, we're going to move this decimal over two places. And that's going to be 87.5%. All right, so that's a 1 eighth. Not very many of those these days, but they were very common in the early days of the oil and gas lease. Let me redo that. 87.5. All right, so now let's do 3 sixteenths. We're going to divide the numerator, that's the 3, by 16. So how many times can 16 go into 3? Well, it can't, so we're going to add a 0 and we're going to put our decimal up here. 16 goes into 30, 2 times 16 is 32, so only one time. 1 times 16, 30 minus 16, 
10 minus 6 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1. So how many times can 16 go into 14? It cannot. So we're going to add another 0. 16 goes into 140. Well, we know 16 times 10 is going to be 160. So if we did 16 times uh, 8, 8 times 6 is 48, 8, Eight times eight, eight times one is eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's going to be one twenty-eight. Okay. So eight times sixteen is going to be one twenty-eight. We're going to subtract. Ten minus eight is two. Three minus two is one. So now we've got a twelve. We're going to add another zero because sixteen cannot go into twelve. And that is going to be let's see. Sixteen times eight is one twenty-eight. So let's try sixteen times seven. 7 times 6 is 42, 7 times 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 112. So this is going to be a 7. 7 times 16 is going to be 112. 20 minus 112 is going to be 10 minus 2 is 8. And that's going to leave an 8. So how many times can 16 go into 8? It can't. So now we're going to have to figure out how many times 16 can go into 80. So let's see, 16 times 8 is 128. Let's go even lower if we go 16 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. 5, that's 80. So we're going to add a 5 here. 5 times 16 is 80, and that equals 0. So our 3 16th decimal is going to become a point, I'm sorry, our 3 16th fraction is going to become a point 0.1875 decimal. Okay, and how are we going to get the percentage? We are going to move that decimal place over two places. And so that decimal is going to be 18, oops, 18.75%. Okay. Clean that up. Eighteen point seven five percent. All right. So now let's look at thirteen sixteenths. Let's look at what the lessee is going to get out of the deal if there is a three sixteenth royalty going to the lessor or the landowner. So once again, we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. And here we're going to have the numerator is thirteen. The denominator is 16. So 16 goes into 13. We know that it can't. So we're going to put a 0 here. And we're going to add a 30. Now what did we say was 128? I shouldn't have erased that stuff. I think it was 16 times 8. 48. 4, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's what it was. So 16 times 8. 8 times 16 is going to be 128. That's going to leave 2. 16 cannot go into 2, so we're going to put another a 0 there. 16 will go into 21 times. 1 times 16 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. How many times does 16 go into 4? It can't, so we're going to add a 0. 16 goes into 40. Well, let's see, 16 times 2 is 32. I think that's about the closest we're going to get. 2 times 16 is 32. 40 minus 32 is 10 minus 2 is 8. Okay, so that's an 8. So then 16 can't go into 8, so we're going to add a 0. And now, what did we say the 880 was? 16 times 5, I believe we said. 6 times 5 is 30. 8, that's right. So 0.8125 is what 13 sixteenths decimal converts to. Let me clean up my mess here. Eight one two five. 
and that's going to become 81 point, oops, 25 percent. Okay? So now let's look at a kind of an easy one, this one-fifth. Let's see how easy it is. So if the oil and gas lease has a royalty fraction of one-fifth, this is how one-fifth converts to a decimal. So I'm going to take the numerator, which is one, and I'm going to divide it by the denominator, which is five. Can five go into one? No. So we're going to put our decimal in there. We're going to add a zero. Five goes into ten two times. There we go. So one-fifth is point twenty. And that percent is move the decimal place over two spaces, and that's 20%. One more, and then class will be dismissed. <clears throat> and that is four fifths. So we're going to take the numerator, which is four, and we're going to divide it by the denominator, which is five. Five goes into 40. 8 times, so that's going to be 80, point 80, and the percent is going to be 80 percent. Now, notice the difference in the amount of money the oil and gas company makes based on what the royalty fraction is. So, which fraction gives the oil and gas company the most money? And clearly that would be Oops. Clearly that would be the 0.875. So here the oil and gas company is getting a 0.875 interest. If it's a 316th, they're only going to get a 0.8125. And if it's an one fifth, they're only going to get 80. So it's very important to the oil and gas company what the fraction is. Although they do want to satisf satisfy that lessor and give them what they want because otherwise they won't have permission to drill on the oil and gas well. So I hope this was helpful to you and um, I'll continue presenting them as long as you keep watching. Thanks.